Hello grade 11s. Welcome to this lesson on interpreting mixed graphs. We are going to join Reno as we examine a set of axes on a parabola, straight line and a circle plotted on them. A circle does not often come up in questions and we are not required to know them at this stage. Let us join Reno who can tell us more. On the monitor, we have three graphs, an upside down parabola, a straight line, and a circle. And we see that all three graphs share one x-intercept, that is there when x is equal to 5. The other x-intercept of the parabola is here at x equal to minus 2. This is all the explicit information that we have. Our challenge now is to find the formulae of all three graphs. Right, where do we start? We know explicitly that the coordinates of the two x-intercepts of the parabola are negative 2 and 5. But we saw that they do not define the parabola. Having the two x-intercepts is not sufficient. We need the coordinates of another point on the parabola. Do you think that the y-intercept of the parabola will also be 5 because of the circle? Why would this be? Let's check. The circle is the same distance from the center everywhere, right? That's how a circle works. Its radius is constant. So, if the center is here and this distance is 5, then this distance from the center to the circle there is also 5. Well, now let's write in the 5. So, if the radius of the circle is 5 units, the distance up here, which is also a radius, would be 5, and then this point here would be 0.5 on the y-axis, and then the distance here, which is also the length of the radius, would be 5, hence making this point negative 5 on the x-axis, and then coming down here, this would be another radius of 5 units, but on the y-axis, this would be the point negative 5. Remember to make use of your knowledge of the properties of a circle. You need to think logically and use those properties to work out other items on the diagram. Now, let's label this y-intercept here. We know that the y-cut is at 5, and the coordinates of this point would be that x is 0 and y is at 5. And then this intercept here on the x-axis the coordinates of this point are x, negative 5, and y, 0. And then on this side here, we know that x is 5, and of course the coordinate point would be y, 0. We are trying to find the formula of the parabola. We have the two x-intercepts, and we have one other point on the parabola, namely the y-intercept. Okay, so now we must work backwards from the roots again. We know that y is 0 on the x-axis. We know the two x-intercepts are x equals 5 or x equals negative 2. That means that x minus 5 equals 0 or x plus 2 equals 0. My two brackets will then be x minus 5, x plus 2 equals 0. But what about a? The formula only works for the two x-intercepts of the parabola. In order to know how wide or narrow the parabola is, we have to calculate a. Well, with the idea of working backwards, we can now use the formula. y is equal to a open brackets, x minus x1, close brackets, second bracket, x minus x2, close brackets. Where the x-intercepts are x1 and x2. We have the x-intercepts, so let's substitute into this general formula. y is equal to a, x minus 5, x plus 2. Now remember, please be careful of the signs. Remember that x minus minus 2 gives us positive 2. 
What do you think? Do you think the value of A will be positive or negative? Are there any clues on the diagram? Think about it. Now, let's work out A. Okay, Y is equal to A times X minus 5 times X plus 2. Now, we need a third point so that we can find the value of A. Let's refer back to our graph. Let's use this point where X is 0 and y is 5. Let's go and substitute x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 5. So y is 5 and x I've substituted as 0 which then comes down to 5 is equal to minus 10a then a is equal to minus 5 divided by 10 a is equal to minus a half. So a is negative and this is correct because the parabola is upside down. Now we can write the formula of the parabola and that will be y is equal to negative a half x minus 5 x plus 2. We can leave the formula in this form. We do not need to multiply out the brackets. We have completed one out of the three tasks successfully. Namely, we have found the formula of the parabola. Now, we still need to find the formulae of the circle and of the straight line. Let's tackle the circle. Do you remember the formula of the circle? It is all the points that satisfy the condition that x squared plus y squared must be equal to the radius squared. So, the circle is defined by its radius. The origin tells us where the circle is positioned on the Cartesian plane. And if we know the radius, then we can work out the formula. This makes it pretty easy. The radius of this circle is 5. It's the distance from the center 0 to anywhere on the circle. And we know that this distance is 5. So x squared plus y squared equals, and in this case the radius is 5, so the formula is x squared plus y squared equals 25. See, that was really easy. Now we just need the formula of the straight line. So we need a formula y is equal to mx plus c. c is the y-intercept. Here it is at 5. So we can write y is equal to mx plus 5. Now all we have to find is m and m is the gradient. We know that m is negative because the line goes down. Let's take a look at the graph. The gradient of the line is negative. That's a good thing to keep in mind. To find the value of the gradient we can walk between the two points, like this. From y equal to 5, we walk down 5 units to the origin, and then we walk 5 units to the right. Then we apply the walk idea to the formula. So now we have to find gradient, m, and m is the change in the values of y, divided by the change in the x values. And in our case, we have m is equal to minus 5, which is the change in the y values, divided by 5, the change in the x values. And then we get a gradient of minus 1. We can now complete the linear formula. y is equal to minus 1x plus 5. Usually, we just write y equals negative x plus 5. So, the formulae of the three graphs are the straight line, y is equal to negative x plus 5, the circle, x squared plus y squared equals 25, and the parabola, y is equal to negative a half, open brackets, x minus 5 multiplied by x plus 2. Now I want to know how long the straight line is between the y-intercept and the x-intercept. Come on, think about it. 
I'll give you a clue. We can use the theory of Pythagoras in the triangle. This is a right-angled triangle because we know that the y-axis is perpendicular to the x-axis. Can you see the triangle? And there is the 90 degree. The theorem of Pythagoras says the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the square of this side plus the square of this side. And we know the lengths of the sides. We know that both of those sides are five units each. So we can write the formula immediately. Here we have our formula. AC squared is equal to AB squared plus BC squared. So AC squared is equal to 5 squared plus 5 squared. AC squared is equal to 25 plus 25. Therefore, AC squared is equal to 50. But the length of a line is not measured in squared units. So we have to take the square root of 50 to get the length of the line. Therefore, AC is equal to the square root of 50. 7 squared is 49. So it makes sense that the square root of 50 will be somewhere close to 7. Approximately 7 units. On the calculator, the square root of 50 is given as 7,071. As you can see, it is very close to 7 indeed. But the accurate value is the irrational number, which we call the square root of 50. To learn more about interpreting graphs, try the task video at the end of this series. Or visit our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Thank you for joining us, Grade 11s. Goodbye.